Oh, ba oh baby, oh. you are oh. the greatest. Oh. This has got to oh. be the... I need more, Larry. God, Shamra. There's lots I haven't done, Laffer. Leaving? Now? A night with you gives a woman plenty of time to think. All that New Age philosophy crap just isn't me. What I really love is money. You can't leave me here like this. You're right. So long, sucker. Hey, I don't smoke. Oh, baby, you are the lowest. This has got to be the worst night of my life. <sighs> well, at least things can't get any worse. I should never say that. Attention, attention. You in the penthouse. Me? Yes, you. The person who spent the night with Shamra. Leave now. We think there may be a fire somewhere. La Costellata thoughtfully provides one of these complimentary little hair weave kits in every room. One of La Costellata's complimentary little hair weave kits lies on the table. You were planning to take it home. It's a good thing Shamor used those vice grips last night. I can just reach him from here. My comb over could use a little thickening. Ow! La Costellata. You open the La Costellata complimentary little hair weave kit and find a needle inside. Ow! Ow! Maybe. Yes! Crazy? This is the 40th floor! Don't you worry! We've got the net here! Lovemaking must have overheated the frame. Yeah, right. <sighs> Hotel furniture just ain't what it used to be. can't lift that, Larry. It must weigh all of 20 pounds. Hey! Oh! Hey! What's this? Ow! I hate paper cuts. I hate paper cuts. Yump! Yump! Okay, I'm coming. I wish I had for myself a dollar every time I've heard that.
from the 40th floor of a burning <laughs> building. What are you going to do next? I'm going to take a cruise. Boat babes, my name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Welcome aboard the PMS Bouncy, Laffer. I'm Captain Thigh. Before this cruise is over, she'll be falling all over me. <laughs> Here's your key card, Mr. Laffer. There's been a slight problem with your room. Eh, I kind of expected that. Oh, not to worry. I took the liberty of substituting our largest cabin. You'll have plenty of room. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's super. Thanks. Now, um, where would my room be? Oh, just check the map. You're in room zero. You're a jet. Oh, never mind. If you're not seated by now, just stand. I'm sure Captain Thigh will be pleased as punch to see such a good turnout this week. And as you all know, each week she runs a little competition for her male, or male-like, passengers, which she calls the Thighs Man Trophy Contest. Isn't that cute? Of course, there's no actual trophy involved. No, what you win is better than hardware. One of you will spend next week cruising on the captain. I mean, what <laughs> it is. She'll treat you to a one-week cruise in her cabin where your every need will be met. Uh -huh. By now, each of you has received your personal scorecard listing a random set of events the computer assigned you. Now, don't you worry, okay? No one has to enter every event. There's just too many. Uh, just find the ones listed on your scorecard, enter, and win. The man with the highest total score wins. Are there any questions? Are there any answers? You may begin. Hey, um, I've got a question. Yes, you there in the... Interesting clothes. Uh, what's this item listed here on my scorecard? Chastity? It's a joke, sweetheart. Say, what's wrong with you, anyway? You're not some sort of government infiltrator, are you? That's ridiculous. 
Oh, yes? I am going to keep my eye on you, sweetheart. It's not my fault you can't make a joke. Yeah? You'll find out when we're finally in charge. Then you'll be the one singing a chast titty tune. That's it. I'm leaving now. Everyone else is already gone. So they have. Very well dismissed. Hmm. He's a strange one. Yeah, baby! Johnson, the bartender, fits the old cliché, surly to bed, surly to rise. Uh, howdy, barkeep. What do you got? My name's Johnson, and anything you want, we got. What do you want? You must get a lot of guys in here telling you their troubles, don't you? Is it hard, Johnson? Yeah, makes me sick. I usually punch their lights out. Why? Oh. Mm, no reason. I, uh, bet you see a lot of beautiful women working here, huh, Johnson? Yeah, so what? I'm just making conversation. And I'm just making drinks. Why don't you stop yapping and order one? Give me a... Oh, just point to the menu. One of those. No problem. Coming right up. Here you go. Boy, are these drinks watered down. How about a bourbon and soda? On the rocks, with a twist, and an umbrella, <laughs> and some fruit. And maybe a bendy straw. You know, one of those things, <clears throat> if you got them. You about done. Uh, yeah. Here, we ain't got no bending straws, so I gave you a cap and half his barrel of fun straw. Well, I guess it'll have to do. What do I owe you? Nothing. I'll put it on your room. Got a key card? Right here. Okay, now drink it. Yeah, baby! See you later, Johnson. Yeah, whatever. Hey, hold it. What do you think you're doing? You can't go in there. That's private. Why, them women could be naked in there, and the, the breast is just swinging back and forth with the, the nipple thing, and they could be hanging upside down and getting it. Well, you just don't know. Oh, sorry, I was just looking for the head. Don't you talk that nautical talk to me, bub. I'm just a plain old country boy. Peggy is the ship's surly, foul-mouthed deckhand. Heavily affected by a childhood spent watching too many pirate movies, she thinks she's a swashbuckler. She even had her peg leg rigged to accept multiple interchangeable janitorial attachments. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Um, may I bother you for a moment? <sighs> this god salt air is rusting me f***ing leg socket. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, who the hell are you? My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. Uh, yeah, well, I'm Peggy. And did I mention 
this salt here is rust and myth. Yeah, yeah, uh, thanks. Well, you don't have to be so f***ing uppity. I can see why they call you Peggy. Peggy. Oh, can you lame ass? It's because my f***ing mother named me Margaret, you stupid c sucker. So, um, how'd you lose your leg, Peg? A uh, freak f***ing accident, that's how. One day, I inadvertently combined KZ Jenny with deodorant spray, forming a powerful contact explosive. Sexual lubricant? Deodorant spray? And you lost your leg? Let's just say I wasn't spraying me f***ing armpits, okay, asshole? Ooh, okay. <laughs> no more details, please. No. Is it just me, or do you seem to swear a lot? Swear? Oh, hell no, mother -er. I suffer from chlorets. Chlorets? <laughs> Don't you mean Tourette's? No, you dumb twit. I mean I got a foul mouth. <laughs> Uh, Miss Peggy, can you help me with these competitions? Help you? Hell no! It's guys like you that dribble all over the f***ing love master, and then guess who has to clean all that shit up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good old Peggy, that's who. Shit. I can't tell you how many times me pig leg's been stuck in that god drain. I'll see you around, Miss Peggy. It's been my f***ing pleasure, you p Your attention, please. Mark has just finished with a record high score in the nude curling competition. This handsome sailor entertains the many children on the cruise. What are you doing? Oh, I'm the handsome sailor who entertains the many children on this cruise. But I haven't seen a single child anywhere. That's because this game is too dirty for kids. Yeah, baby! No alarm sounds. Hmm. Huh. Makes me wonder about all those times I didn't sneak into movie theaters. Oh boy, another beaver joke. Let's see, have you heard the one about the two beavers who went bike riding? Oh, not again. Oh, you've heard it. Yeah, baby! The kumquat tree is an evergreen shrub with beautiful sweet-scented white flowers, cultivated for its small orange-yellow citrus fruit, which is commonly eaten fresh or in preserves, but rarely in quiche. And this is the first one you've ever seen that's been sculpted into a sheep shape. Quickly, repeat after me. Sheep shape, sheep shape, sheep shape. Wow. Look at all the cool stuff back here. Oh well. Don't you wish you could see the stuff that's back here? Ah, 
you snare a delicious kumquat from the tree. How you wish you had a taste icon so you could taste it. Hey, wait! With this new interface, you might! So, exactly what is it you do? Well, I make balloon animals. Say, do you want one? Hmm, not really. I'll consider that a yes. Here you go. Look, it's Hooty the Owl. But that doesn't look like that. Well, it does to me. Yeah, well, uh, you can keep it, okay? Your attention, please. The mandatory lifeboat safety drill for all passengers will be used. God, everybody. You insert your key card into the slot with great anticipation. What will your special suite be like? Cybersmith 2000. You've been provided with the finest in Army surplus cots. Well, that's good. Not that good. It's from the Uzbekistan army, and the only reason it's surplus is because sleeping on it is less comfortable than sleeping on frozen tundra. Oh. Yeah, baby! The toilet worked perfectly when this cabin's last occupant checked in. Oh, that's good. Not that good. He had to plug up its drain pipe to keep it from leaking all over the floor. Oh. This toilet doesn't work. It has no water coming in and the drain seems to be plugged up. Someone stuffed a spray can into the toilet's drain. Oh, that's bad. Not that bad. This way, nothing runs out on your feet. Oh. Now, the toilet drains freely. Well, that's good. Not that good. It hasn't been connected to a water pipe in 34 years. Oh. Now the... Well, not that... Oh. The drain... Now that toilet will have plenty of water. Okay, everybody, break. Five minutes.
your attention, please. Jen has just won the Strip Twister Championship. Good idea. Get everything done at once. What? Not without wiping. What are you going to use? Your leisure suit? Someone must have pushed hard to get his big submarine into that tiny hole. Nah, I already have something long and hard and filled with sea men. Well, up periscope. Hmm, what's this? Oh, a book on that great aircraft manufacturer. Fokker, more than just an airplane by someone named Drew Barrymore, whoever he is. Hmm, I think I'll scan a little of this first to see if it's something I want to read in depth. Anton Hermann Gerard Fokker was born in 1890 in Java. At an early age, he began an airplane manufacturing business in Germany. During World War I, his factories produced triplanes and biplanes. He revolutionized aerial warfare in 1915 by mounting a machine gun on the front of an airplane, then synchronized the gun so it would fire through the blades of the plane's propeller instead of shooting them off. After the war, he turned to developing commercial aircraft. In 1922, he moved to the United States, where he died in 1939. Nah, you've already read this one. Excuse me, miss. Um, that's Ms. Victorian Principles. Nice to meet you. My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Oh, I so love dual first names. One cruise I met Boutros Boutros Gali. Are you the ship's librarian? Yes, I am. Do you see something you'd like to check out? Oh. Oh. All righty. What is your cabin number? Whoa, babe, slow down. Jeez, and women say I'm fast. Fast? Uh, well, sir, we check out books by cabin number here. Oh. Zero. Zero? <laughs> Tight budget? No, you see, uh, you don't want to know. Correct. Tickle your ass with a feather? <gasps> what did you say? I said particularly nasty weather. Oh. Really? So, uh, you got any good books? Oh, many kinds. Unfortunately, you're a little late. All the really good ones are already gone. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. How's your book? 
Oh, quite uplifting. I so enjoy books affirming sound moral principles. Don't you? Oh, uh, yes, yes, I do, but, uh, don't you ever read anything spicier? Oh, no. Those books don't appeal to me. All that panting and groping, that raw animal passion, that... Oh, well, it just encourages the wrong sort of thoughts. No, no, I only expose myself to great literature. I wish I was some great literature. Yeah, great literature. Yeah. But, um, what do you do for entertainment? Well, I start at one end of the bookcase and read my way through to the other. Unfortunately, I'm now on my third pass through most of them. Cruise ship life looks like an endless vacation. Don't you just love it? Sure, it's perfect. If perfect means knowing that every day you're going to have exactly the same food you had that day last week, it's perfect. But all the fun, the nightlife, the non-stop partying. Oh, well, not for us crew members. For us, it's more like never being able to leave the office. <laughs> Nine four five point three four seven one point two four one ninety eight point thirty three. Oh, what are you doing? What do you think? Whispering Dewey Decimal numbers to you. Turn ya on, huh? Uh, hardly. I've filed them all. Nine four five point three. Four seven one point. Oh, what are you? What do you think? Uh, hardly. <laughs> Did I mention my name is Larry? Now, would you like to have sex? You're disgusting. You'll never get anywhere with me, you pathetic loser. How about me whispering a few Dewey Decimal numbers in your ear, Victorian? As if I haven't heard that line before. Men, you're all alike. What about these? Oh, those? Those are already checked out. To me. That's a lot of reading for one cruise. Not for me. I'll finish those tonight. In bed. Would you like to know what I plan to do tonight, um, in bed? I'll vote sleep. Just a moment. Let me look that up for you. Your attention, please. Brian has just won the strip Championship. You never know when something should be more sticky. We have one book on that, but the captain is reading it. Well, nice talking to you, Victorian. Perhaps I'll stop by later. Alrighty then. Good day.